Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 film that did really well on the festival circuit, uh, Scare Package, which is a comedy horror film, and it's a Shutter original. It's on Shutter at the moment when I'm recording this and putting this review out. It is streaming on Shutter, so if you have Shutter, you can check it out there, and I do recommend it. Since this ju just hit Shutter, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be doing spoilers in this, and I, what I am going to be doing is giving it a few ratings. I'm going to write rate each individual short because it's a bunch of short films put together as one with one wraparound, and I'll give one individual rating for each one of the shorts, uh, and then I'll give one overall for the whole film. But I do recommend it up front, especially if you're a real horror nerd, because there are a lot of jokes in it and a lot of, you know, just small things kind of added in there as well that speak directly to the horror nerd, people who really need to be deep into the genre to kind of get certain things. So for that reason, I actually don't know if this horror comedy would be that funny or entertaining for people who aren't, you know, relatively deep into the horror community. So I don't know, but I enjoyed it, so. Um, the directing is consistent in this. That's one thing I wanted to say overall is that the, the directing that's done in it is quite good in my opinion. Uh, and I, I don't think there were any where I was watching it and being like, Ooh, the directing's not so hot in this. So very solid technically with this film. The other thing is for the most part, the music used throughout is really well done and the editing is good. Now, I do think the film could have been edited down a little bit because it's an hour, I think with credits, it's like an hour and 47 minutes or something like that. So for a horror comedy to be that long, it's a little long uh, and it does feel a little bit long at times, but um, I'm not really going to complain about it because it's good. I enjoy it. There are a few particular shorts that I wasn't that fond of and I'll end up telling you why without spoilers, but um and I think they could have kind of left those out to cut the runtime down, but, you know, it is what it is. And I'm just happy to get another horror comedy because there aren't that many out there and they're not easy to execute, which is why I'm excited that this one's good. All right, so the first one, which was the beginning, and, and that's the order I'm going in all the shorts, the first one, and then it goes on. Uh, the first one is called Cold Open. Now, this one was written and directed by Emily Haggins. Uh, I wrote down, it was a pretty original idea. I really like that. It's kind of outside of the box. It's very meta as far as horror and film goes. It uses a lot of horror trap, you know, typical horror trappings to kind of sell the story. And it does have good comedy to it. Some of the acting in it is, is a little bit rough, but they, they hit the acting where it matters the most, which is the lead in the story that person does a really good job with the acting and they bring a real fun feeling to the delivery of the lines and the way they play that character out so that's what really sells it in my opinion that and the actual writing of it uh there's some really funny over-the-top gore in this one that i really enjoy i always appreciate over-the-top gore that is comedic over-the-top gore and this one actually has that so um, yeah, so I give that short open uh, cold open an overall of three and a half stars out of five. I quite enjoyed that one. The next one is the one that's actually overarching. Like that's the one that kind of brings everything together, and you see it numerous times uh, in between a bunch of the uh, short films, and then it finishes at the end in a much longer segment than I thought it was going to have. So overall, it's actually relatively long. And that one's Rad Chad's Horror Emporium, and then it goes into Horror Hypothesis. Now, this one was uh, directed by Aaron B. Kuntz, and it was written by it was directed by Aaron B. Kuntz and written by I think Kuntz, but also Cameron Burns. Um, I think it was a uh, mainly Cameron Burns who was the writer for it. Um, so this one actually has some of the best comedic moments in it for the entire film, and I really enjoy that. Uh, and it, I love the fact that it kind of serves to bring everything together. And I think it does a good job of bringing everything together, holding it all together. It's all about the setting. And the setting plays very, very heavily to, well, I mean the film in general, but this particular short, the setting of it plays to the, the horror nerds who grew up in the times of renting horror movies from places like Blockbuster and you know, family video stores and stuff like that. Uh, specifically, this focuses on VHS tapes, but you get that same feel if, if you hit it 
during the times of you know renting DVDs. So it plays off a lot of that nostalgia, and it actually, I mean, in general, it plays off a lot of kind of horror tropes from the '80s mainly, um, and you kind of get that with you know all the '80s feel they have to it, the outfits, the music in particular. Music is very '80s, which may be part of the reason I like it so much. Um, this one goes, uh, the Rad Chads one goes way further and way way deeper than you're expecting it to it seems very on the surface with some you know kind of deep jokes but it doesn't feel like it's going to get deep story wise but it does and that's like that's one of the coolest things about this now that doesn't really spoil anything because you have no idea what that really means and it gets fun it gets interesting and it has a lot to say and i think it's quite well written uh there's a joke at the almost very end of this that had me laughing out loud pretty hard. Now I've actually watched this twice now because I watched it when Joe Bob Briggs premiered it. And then I just watched it today again. And I laughed really, really hard the first time I saw that joke. And the second time I watched it, I still laughed, which, which is, you know, pretty impressive because I, it takes a lot to get me to laugh. Now it's, it's a joke that you, you kind of either have to be a pretty considerable horror nerd to get it or you need to just remember one particular film that needs to stick out in your head. Uh, it was good. It, it was a good joke. I really enjoyed it. And I felt like I was enjoying it. And then once that joke happened, it bumped my enjoyment even further up. It was it was nice. So overall, I give the Rad Chads one a four out of five stars. It's quite well done. I enjoyed that. Uh, then the next one, which is actually my favorite of all of them, One Time in the Woods. This one was written and directed by Chris McEnroy. This one is really tight, really well done. The writing is good. The acting's a little, yeah. But the directing's good, writing's good, cinematography's good. Practical effects are really good. This actually has the best practical effects in the entire thing and um, some really good over-the-top funny gore, like I was just saying, I really enjoy. And it's an interesting mashup story-wise of a few different subgenres, and it just, it works really well. And this had a lot of the best jokes coming through as well, and it was just like joke, 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 like funny, funny, funny. Like, it just kept hitting with the funny. It was the quintessential what you want horror comedy to be for the most part. Um... So that was my favorite short of all of them. It, it really came together. And for that reason, I'm giving that four and a half out of five stars. It's quite good. Then there was the one, Mister, which is actually my least favorite of all of them. Now, this one was uh, directed by Noah Segan, who also stars in it. And he also did some of the writing on it. And Frank Garcia Hegel also did writing on that. Uh, this plays at the idea of kind of like toxic masculinity and it uses a metaphor for it, which I thought the idea was good and the metaphor was a good start. But the problem is that I feel like the script wasn't that fleshed out all that great. It's a good idea. There's a good idea, but the execution of it isn't so great. And I'm not talking about execution from the technical standpoint of when they shot it or the acting really. I'm talking from the standpoint of the writing. The script just wasn't there. And it's not funny. That's the other thing. There are a few things that are, you know, maybe a little bit funny. But it, a lot of the jokes just didn't land. It just, and it felt like it didn't really go anywhere that mattered. And I don't know. It also felt way too short. I think they really needed to kind of expand the time on that to really flesh out the story more, make it more interesting, and make it funnier. So I gave it one and a half out of five stars. I, I didn't enjoy that one. Um, then another one that I didn't like a ton, but there was an aspect of it I really did. This one's called Girls Night Out of Body. Now, this was directed by Courtney Andajar and Hilary Andajar and written by Ben Fee. Um, overall, I thought, okay, so the, the biggest problem for me was story-wise. There's not much of a story there. It seems very confused. It seems to not have a focus of what it actually wants to do or how it wants to do it. It felt, feels like also it's trying to do a little bit too much at certain times with a very small amount of time. Um, they should have focused a little bit more, taken some more passes at the script to really, you know, make it one good thing. Uh, the other thing is it's not funny at all. There's no comedy to it at all. So it doesn't really feel like it fits with all the other stories. 
But for the good things that I'll say, oh, the other thing is there's a really odd, there are a few odd moments where it's like weirdly blurry. The visuals are blurry and maybe that's intentional, but it doesn't look intentional. It just looks bad. So I didn't like that aspect of it, but the positives. Um, so I was going to give this one and a half stars, but the positives that I'm about to talk about has had me bump it up. Uh, the use of lighting and colors in this actually look really good, and it's extremely stylish the way it was shot. Um, of all the shorts, it looks the best direct directing and cinematography-wise. It's very stylish. It has a very cool, sleek look and feel to it, and they do some cool things with camera. Um, good directing, very good directing. I would like to see um, Courtney Andajar and Hilary Andajar do something else direct something else maybe they can write their own thing i don't know but their directing is really good uh and this i think that one also had the best music of all of them too so there's some positives so overall i give it two stars because that script not having a good script brings it way 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 down it just kind of feels like after you watch it you're like okay uh the next one is the night he came back again part four the final kill which i think is a funny title uh, this one is directed by Anthony Cousins and written by John Carsco. Uh, this is another kind of zany, over-the-top one of the shorts. Uh, I like the fact that, once again, it kind of has some gore that's done over-the-top so that it's funny. It, it goes full throttle with the gore and the violence. It is not backing down. It's just going for it. Uh, and I appreciate that about it. It, is, it isn't over-the-top to a point where you don't like it, though, because some of the stuff gets done... You know, with horror comedies, you can go too far over the top where people are just like, that's not actually very funny. It, it, it went over the top just enough in, in the right way to appeal to people. And it actually plays very hard at one particular thing about slasher films that they all have in common with, um, well, I'm not going to say anything about that. Um, the, the acting at times is a little, mm, so that kind of detracts from it. But overall, I like the story. I like the way it was executed. And I'm giving it a three-star rating. So I enjoyed it. Uh, and then the last one is So Much To Do. Now, this one was written and directed by Baron Vaughn. Uh, and the interesting thing I thought is it speaks to a societal obsession in a very hyperbolic way. Now, I like it at first, but then the way it finishes, I felt like it stepped over that line of ridiculousness, and it got slapsticky, and it was kind of, uh, I just, it, it, um, I think if they would have finished it a different way, it, it would have gone a lot better for me. I, the setup is really good, and it actually looks really good. The directing on this one is nice. The acting is really good, too. It's some of the best acting in the entire thing, so I really enjoyed that. Um, it's a good premise. It's a good societal commentary. It's just, it didn't come together as you would want in the end. The ending actually felt kind of over the top, slapsticky, kind of dumb. Um, had they just kind of worked on that ending a little bit more, it could have been a lot better. But I enjoyed it enough, I will say. So I'm giving that one two stars out of five. So that was it for, for the actual individual shorts. Um, the It had a really fun ending. Uh, to this in particular, and really great music to match that fun, cool ending. Uh, there's a lot of smart stuff going on in this film. Like I said, it really hits a lot of notes for, for people who are deep into the horror community, like real horror nerds. So this it endears itself to people like myself, and a lot of you watching, I'm sure, who, um, yeah, just get nerdy about horror, and you know a lot about you know the typical happenings in horror films, especially for the 80s. Now, um... I enjoyed this, and like I said, I just love that it's another horror comedy because we don't get a ton of them, and when we do get some, they're just not very good. So for it to be well done and, you know, it's another horror comedy, that's great. So I say bravo for this one, good job, and I'm going to give it overall four out of five stars. I'm I'm happy with it, and I would love to see a scare package too because that's one of the things. You could keep going with something like this, and they could even keep some of the same idea that they had for the wraparound story and just do that same type of thing and then just put in, you know, new directors, new writers. Just keep it going. You know, you could go up to Scare Package 10 if you want to. You could have a whole franchise of Scare Package, which I would be 
all in for. But awesome. So thanks everyone for checking this out. Real quick though, put some comments down here. We will make the comments spoilers, so go ahead. If you don't want spoilers at the moment, don't comment at the moment. Unless you just want to go down comment without reading anything, that's fine. Uh, so let's talk about these down there. But do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe if you like any videos I do. Uh, because that's your best way to repay me. Literally takes a second and it's totally painless. And I appreciate it a lot. If you're already subscribed though, make sure you hit that like button. Just let me know I'm still or you're still enjoying my stuff. And also, if you are going to subscribe or if you've already subscribed, make sure you hit the notification bell so you know whenever a new video comes out or when I'm doing a live stream. So thanks for check, checking this out and taking your time to watch it. I appreciate that. And until next time, keep it brutal.